Welcome to Cebu Expat by Matt Wilkie, discussing expat life in the Philippines. Okay, let's walk before we run. Um, the Philippines, business-wise, most businesses take a lot of time to understand. A lot of businesses are destined for failure. A lot of businesses weren't viable from day one. Um, I can put this in context with the UK, with the pub industry, um, because many moons ago, um, I, I used to own my own company as a locksmith. And one of the things I used to deal with is all the repossessions of pubs in January. Um, basically what happens is Joe Bloggs gets a redundancy payment or they had an accident at work so they had a big lump sum and they drink down the local pub every week so I thought you know what let's get the pub let's move into the pub we can run the pub we know no idea about business the brewery pump them up they tell them how great they are and how easy it is breweries only make money for themselves um, I want to point that out so what happens is you go in there you put your money down and they start increasing the price of beer transportation blah 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 whatever whatever excuse they come up with they're pushing your prices up week in week out they're, they're finding ways to squeeze more money out of you um, the end result is you've worked really hard all Christmas etc and you think I'm gonna take January off I'm gonna have a break so you take the takings from Christmas and you blow them in January which means you've got no money you can't pay your bills etc etc and then the brewery come in and go we'll give you uh, a bit of leeway a bit of money towards keeping you open we'll pay your bills from the fixtures and fittings that you where all your redundancy money went then as a little time goes oh you still got no money to pay us back um, and it sort of goes very quickly to the point they take the pub back and then they look for the next Joe Bloggs wanting to invest in a pub um, as their pipe dream and we'll do exactly the same again that's the pub trade in the UK now the reason I put that in context there is because when you go to the Philippines you will find restaurants that don't make money you will find hotels that don't make money you will find many businesses that exist which will struggle to survive and most of it I find from looking around is down to the cost relating to the landlords the people that own the building um, so the best thing to do is the way I did it is we bought the land built our own places um, takes longer but at the end of the day you control it yourself now what I recommend for the first few months in the Philippines is before you go find ways to make money online find ways to do stuff remotely you know even if it's answering Skype calls for a taxi firm and booking taxis or whatever it doesn't matter what it is you need a regular income um, and then you'll spend at least three months getting stable in the Philippines don't expand out too quickly when I first moved to the Philippines our entire house is about the size of this hotel room um, but we were sustainable there we could actually sit in that house um, up until I was 80 you know we could afford to live there what happened is is we expanded out over the years we didn't expand out at day one but also we do it in a sustainable building, uh, business model because we got our, our apartment uh, then we rented out some others that where we're going to touch with a few landlords um, then rented those out and took a percentage because uh, renting apartments you normally get one month per year um, of the rent which doesn't sound a lot but you can normally find that 
in our case our rent on our first property um, that we rented because there was issues with the family ancestral one then we moved to another one it was only 3,000 pesos a month or 3,500 I think in the end um, I could make that money just off rentals um, because the way I always plan things is to I box things up so need to pay the rent for the year need to pay this need to do that the electric bill do that. so then I start going okay the the money off AdSense that pays for our food or whatever and you build it up and then once you, that's all making money you then look at what you can do next to expand from it so my best advice is start small keep keep things contained you're you, you're going to meet somebody or you did have and they're going to want to be showing off that they're um married to a foreigner etc they want to spend money and you know take the family out and stuff don't do it There's, i'm not being funny treat it as if you would in the west you're not the atm machine don't become one um it's not being thrifty it's not being tight um it's being responsible because when you, all your money's gone right i'll give you two scenarios first one you don't do it people don't like you because uh, you won't take them out drinking etc oh well i'm not going to lose any sleep over it let's be honest here they're not going to take you out drinking either um lose all your money and become the local bum they all hate you <laughs> so that's the way, that's the way to look at it if if you're not paying for everything so what you know at the end of the day you're not there to have the entire family leech off you so don't let them but you'll also find that people respect you because you're not the idiot because they do see people as stupid they pay for everything um i know a lot of people assume it's all about oh power they don't because even filipinos get sick of it um so be aware of it you don't have to do it so don't get caught up in it i get people talk about culture and then i fire back but i'm not bothered you know that's your culture but this is mine you know i'll meet you halfway or not at all <laughs> so just take your time on this um it's a journey get your property set up get all your internet and that set up work out how you're going to eat daily um and where you're doing your shopping and stuff because different stores have different pricing um funny enough i was sitting today thinking how much i missed um roast chicken white rice and soy sauce um because we used to have that a lot when i first went there because it's cheap um i think it's about 130 pesos it's a little bit more now but the fact is that was our sustainable diet for some time and then we throw in some veg and stuff there's lots of ways to get by but the the main thing is day one keep everything contained and then slowly start expanding things out start to understand your neighborhood start to understand how everything functions because it's all going to be very new to you um and then you can start developing how you're going to be sustainable now another big important thing here it doesn't matter if you're a retiree or like myself went there when they're younger um because from a retiree point of view um people die uh, so creating a sustainable business model and etc etc that is not relying on your pension is something i recommend people think about um because when people die the money stops and then everything they loved and cherished and spent time with um deteriorates and very rapidly um i don't know there's a lot of expats that don't see it as their problem blah 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 well i can understand why you weren't married in the first place <laughs> because you're not taking responsibility for your own actions um you should be 
trying to make things sustainable. And it's not hard. It really isn't hard. When it gets harder, the more you spend. The more you spend, the, the more expensive things get. The bigger you get. You go from, like ours, we went from a one bedroom place to now we're in two compounds. Uh, going from a little scooter to we've got um, a 220cc motorbike and a big 3 litre turbo 4x4. Um, that's how things develop. But the main thing is you make the budgets to fit. Because um, I know people go out there and they'll buy a car. It's like, yeah, I'm going to get the car, going to get this, going to get that. And then six months later, they're regretting it because they realize getting the maintenance done on the car is not easy. And they're too old or not interested in climbing in and fixing it themselves. And they get the cowboy mechanics in. Um, and then they try and sell it. Everybody wants to give you it for about a third of what you paid for it. Um, so yeah, that's why I say just take it slowly. You'll find life so much easier. Thanks for watching.